Recently, someone inside the Girls Twiddling Knobs podcast community asked me a great question. Is there a playlist for the podcast where people can check out the music from all the past guests? And I said, no, but there definitely should be. So we got to work over here at GTK HQ, and I'm delighted to share that the Girls Twiddling Knobs podcast playlist is now live on Spotify and is waiting for you to dive into right now. Whether you're curious to find out more about the wonderful women we've featured on the podcast so far, desperate for some music production inspiration, or committed to diversifying your listening material, this is the playlist you've been waiting for. Check it out right now at the link in the show notes. Have you ever fantasised about starting your own recording studio? I know, wouldn't that be amazing? But also, where the hell do you even begin? I mean, there's a lot to think about and don't you need tens of thousands of pounds to get started? But when I sat down to chat with musician, producer and studio owner Magellan back in episode 35, she shared exactly how she and her partner established her very own female-friendly studio space. Yep, this is another Golden Nugget episode, and what I love most about this one is that Magellan shares how much you can do with just a few DIY skills and some understanding of sound treatment. And if you're thinking, but I don't know anything about sound treatment yet, download my free sound treatment guide now from femalediymusician.com forward slash learn with Isabel. Trust me, it is cheaper and easier than you think. But of course, listen to this Golden Nugget episode first with Magellan. So you you had a whole year's worth of work was scrapped because of COVID. But how did you start this studio up? Because so many people would be listening and being like, oh my God, that's so cool. And I've always wanted to do that. But how do you do that? Yeah. Uh Um, Well, I was lucky. I guess, in the sense that I had some gear. Um, And then, unfortunately, um, in my acquisition of other gear, I guess, um, a lot of sound companies shut down. And I was kind of sitting here being like, holy shit, what do I do? Um, And this gear came up for sale. And they were just like, literally like, some guys, so it was okay, because they had been told previously that they had to switch from analog to digital. So I was like, well, I want analog. So I'll just buy it. And they were just getting rid of it, like absolutely stupidly cheap. So that worked out amazing for me. Um, So (laughs) I got some extra gear then, but I already had some stuff. But what about setting up a studio? Where did you start? Are you (laughs) renting a space? Like, how, how did this all begin? Yeah. Um, so we have a warehouse, um, and we got the warehouse because we could run all of the businesses out of it on different days. And so I have upstairs as the studio, um, and it's a hundred meter square warehouse. And so there's a mezzanine on the top floor and then there's the big warehouse space downstairs, which can be emptied out and is emptied out sometimes for random gigs and other recording things. And also it's very, really cool. Actually, if you run like an output from the console out the window downstairs through a guitar and, and put like a couple of room mics down there. The natural reverb is amazing. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, I did that. Um, but uh, that's so cool. That, but that's such a good idea. Like with all the different businesses you've got to bring them together into yeah. this warehouse space. And then like you say, you can clear it out, use it for gigs. You could shoot music, music videos, yeah. you know, it's how cool is that? It's pretty cool. Yeah. And it just, it's a great idea. It just happened because of COVID. I mean, it's, yeah, it's a good mm. thing. But coming back to you starting the studio. So with the warehouse, did you buy it or do you rent oh, it? Oh, sorry. Back to that. Yes, we are renting. <laughs> um, yeah. We rent okay, so you space. rent the whole warehouse. Yeah. Um, our plan is long term. We're actually going to move to a property uh, further up Queensland because half of Melbourne is now living at the Gold Coast. and It's gotten very busy traffic wise. Um, so we're going to move a bit further up and get some land and some horses. And um, so in about two years time, if anyone wants to come to Australia, if you're allowed to with COVID gone and stuff and record some music and also ride some horses, come to my place because we'll be hanging. Um, but it'll be cool. <laughs> and <laughs> so basically, yeah, we're just awesome. renting the warehouse for now. Um, and it's amazing and I really love it. And it's just been like an epic start space. Um, and so, yeah, I've just like worked on getting this top room sound treated and, um, sounding nice. Yeah. We've just spent 
a fair bit of time just preparing the room because the room's got to sound good ultimately otherwise yeah. there's no point really doing too much yeah. else um so we put a lot of time totally. and effort into the room and then um built and can just before you can continue there sorry how did you sound treat it so was that getting a company in or did you do it diy i did it um so using oh what's it called ah oh, sound id so it gives you a graph and it like it measures it, you can measure your speakers and your headphones all sorts of stuff um so that then you know what you're working with like it'll give you a reading um and then you know like if certain headphones are more bass heavy say or like oh they've got like a massive dip at like 1k hertz or something you know you you know then and then you can kind of work with that sort of thing and you can do that for whole rooms as well so you get a microphone in the room um which comes with it's a software that you buy and then you put the mic there and it runs through the microphone and picks up like what's coming back at it and then so I like this room sounded terrible when we got here so we put like carpet down because it's quite a low ceiling um but now it's actually good because it sounds really sick with drums in here like we made diffusers by hand like huge huge massive wooden diffusers um Courtney and I went up to visit my parents in Mackay in North Queensland and spent like four days <laughs> gluing little squares of wood onto this big like 1200 by 1200 square wooden sheet thing and yeah, yeah it took hours of gluing and many movies and <laughs> a couple of glasses of wine but we got there yeah and like we've just done random stuff like if you're if you um with a few of the right tools and some creativity, you can do it yourself. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. like, ultimately, when I go to my own space, I'm going to actually build a studio. Like, I'd like it to be in a barn. Mm -hmm. I reckon that'd be cool. Yeah, but that'd be great. Actually work with a designer to, um, you know, shape the walls really nice. And like, because I like windows and I like mm -hmm. seeing outside. Yeah. I love nature. And I don't want my studio to look like a cave. Like, I hate mm. going into so many studios. I just feel like you're in a like underground cave and I don't like that so I'm gonna actually design it nicely like I've seen so many also that are just beautiful yeah and so yeah this has been a massive learning curve for me and I've really enjoyed it um because like yeah I've just this room sounds great now yeah but it was shocking at first and it was it was trial and error and it was a lot of like you try one thing and then you go back and ch try it out and it's like okay that's not really good enough. Mm. So then you go back and do it again. And that's okay. Mm -hmm. You know, you just, you just got to keep taking another step. Yeah. I think that's a big thing. You just, you just take another step. Totally. And again and again and again. again. Totally. I think that's a really good piece of advice because there's so many people, especially women, I think will get really scared that if it doesn't work first time or even second time, that it means that they're just terrible at this stuff and they'll never get their head around it. And in rea in reality, it's exactly like you say, it's trial and error. It's a lot of creativity. I mean, you can see behind mm -hmm. me, I have my duvet that I hang. I've, I've sewn two little eyelets <laughs> into the top of the duvet. <laughs> And then I have two little um, nails. I hang the duvet over my door behind me and it just works. There's this That's nice amazing. little sound blanket behind me. Yes, that works great. Yeah. And you've just, you've got to be creative like that, like you say. And then on the other hand, I have my acoustic panels, which are much more standard. Yeah. Um, but you've got to have different, different um, techniques. And mm. I totally agree that sound treatment is one of the most important things for getting a good recording yeah and it doesn't have to cost a shit ton of money if if you yeah if, if you're kind of able to spend a bit of time on it like you say mm. um but that's really useful to know about that piece of software yeah and also really interesting to hear about your process so so yeah so one of the first things was getting the sound right yep um and you got some equipment um because people were kind of offloading it during lockdown mm. um so that's cool how how come you knew you wanted analog oh I've just always liked I guess I just I because I'm a I'm a guitarist and I like using my hands to like this is what I do all day like I just I yeah and I love the like physical I can touch something and I can see it moving and like I I work sometimes just completely in the box too, like completely just in Pro Tools or Logic or whatever I'm using. But I like, 
I like the physical side of analog and I love the warmth it gives. Like there's nothing wrong with digital, nothing wrong with digital. Like anyone who's like, oh, digital is like stupid and you're just never going to sound good enough if you're just using digital. Like that's, that's crap. Digital's just clean. Like analog yeah. just, analog just has natural saturation and natural stuff that it adds because it's a physical electronic circuit board thing you know and and like Mm. that you're not going to get with digital but Mm. either way you're going to have good audio but I just prefer analog sound and it's just fun (laughs) and that's the main thing like it's fun whatever works for you is fabulous just do that totally yeah totally and and like you say it's like you've you've given yourself another option because you, you use digital recording as well yeah but you have the option of analog yeah Well, I hope you liked this Golden Nugget episode and that it's given you some fresh perspectives and new ideas to try in your own music and creative life. Remember to swing back over here each Thursday for another dose of bite-sized Girls Twiddling Knobs realness from the archives before we drop season four in November this year. If you like this episode, why not hit subscribe and share it with a musician friend? And to listen to the full original episode, check out the link in the show notes. Okay, Knob Twiddlers, I'll catch you here next time. Just one final thing, dear listener. I just wanted to ask what you thought of today's episode. Did you love it? Did it make you feel emotions and stuff? Did it give you a whole new philosophy on the meaning of life? No? Okay, well, fair enough. But if you liked it at all, just share a teeny weeny review wherever you're listening because, number one, my ego likes a massage and... More importantly, two, I can learn what you're loving and want more of. Oh, and three, it'll boost our ranking in the podcast algorithm, meaning more women and girls will hear all this girls twiddling knobs goodness. Triple win. I can't wait to read your review.